today we're going to be looking at a question from a viewer. I believe his name was Wuya. Uh, and he wants to know how to download images using WGET from this website here. I'm assuming that he means he wants to download a bulk, like all these images that there are thumbnails of, instead of going and downloading them one at a time. Um, and what we're going to do, uh, and we're going to use tools that we've already gone over in the past. We're going to use WGET, grep, and cut, and throw that into a while loop. That's pretty much it. Um, if you're unfamiliar how to use these tools, please watch previous videos. This video is going to be too advanced for you. And I'm going to go kind of fast since this is kind of something I've done a number of times at different sites, but it doesn't hurt to go over things more than once. And I'm just trying to show you my um, thought process because programming isn't just writing out code, it's problem solving. And a lot of people, I can tell from the questions I get, they understand how tools work sometimes, but they don't understand how to use them in a practical sense. Um, and people ask me quite often how to, you know, to do tutorials on practical uses, and really the practical use just depends on your problem. I can't, you know, anyway, let's just get going. Uh, as an example, let's, let's just first let's download a single image. Uh, let me first, let me make a directory to work in. Make directory, we'll just call it IM, and I'll clear it. And as you can see, there's nothing in this directory. We'll pick an image uh, like this cat here. We'll click on that. We'll right click and we'll say view image. Where's the view image right there? So there's the image, there's the link. And as we can see by the link, it's a very simple link. And then this part right here, you can just tell by looking at that pretty much that's the you know, unique identifier for that file, for that image. Other than that, all images are going to be this URL with the different uh, code right there. Code? Okay, anyway. Let's just wget and the name of that file. I'll paste that in there. And we got that list. There we go. I can display it out. And there's our kitty cat. Okay. Uh, let's remove that file. So we're starting, oops. So we're starting from scratch. And now that we have that link right there, uh, we can go back and actually let's just copy that unique identifier right there, JS EP or E9P in this case. And we'll go back to original page here. We'll hit Control U, bring up the source code of the page, and I will quickly do F and do a search. There we go. We can see that that word or that those uh, unique I ID is uh, shown on this line and a few other lines, but I think uh, this line is the shortest, probably the simplest to grab. And as you can see, it says class equals post. And we need to find something unique about this line from other lines to clear out everything else. So I think that this would be the best line to do that with. We'll see in a moment with this post here. And what we're going to say is wget. Uh, I'm going to do dash Q so we don't see the download information. We just see the output. Let's grab the URL to the site, to the gallery. Paste that in there in quotations. And we're going to say dash O for output. And we're just going to do a space dash for standard output. That will just display the HTML code to the page rather than save it to a file. So there we go. And as we just discussed, we can grep through it and find this line right here. We're going to search for the word post. So I'm going to say post. Let me shrink down the font here a little bit to make this easier to read. And let's just clear the screen and do that again. So we're grabbing the HTML of the page. We're piping it into grep, and we're grabbing lines that say post. There we go looks pretty good. Most of the lines we got are the lines we want with the IDs for each image. But we do have a line up here that says class posts. That's the beginning tag for that area of the page. And down here we've got three lines that say post empty. How can we narrow out just these lines in the middle here? Well this one doesn't say posts, it says posts. So that's easy enough to get rid of. And this one, these ones down here, say post with a space after it. So if we just grab lines that say post with a quotation mark after it, uh, we should be set. So let's run that last command. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our post inside single quotes and put a double quote right there. So it's only grabbing lines that say post and end in the double quote there next to it. And there we go. And all we got now are our lines. So now we just want to erase everything 
except for the actual ID, which is easy enough. We can use cut to grab everything in between these two quotations. So what we're going to do is run the same command. We're going to pipe it into cut dash delimiter. And we're going to say in this case, our delimiter, uh, which is what we're cutting things up into columns by is the double quotation quotation mark. And we're going to say field two because everything on this side is field one and this will be field two right here. So dash F two. And we got a long list of all of our uh, ID tags. So next we're going to pipe that into a while loop and do something for each one of those uh, IDs. So we're going to say while read. So we're reading this line by line. ID. I'm going to just use ID. That's our variable. You can call that what you'd like. And we're going to say do. And at first we're just going to, we're going to get some output for our script so we know what's going on. We're going to say downloading. And we're going to say dollar sign ID dot JPEG. And if I just finish up the loop now, I can see it's just displayed all those out, but didn't actually download anything. So we're going to add another command into this loop. I'm going to say wget dash q for quiet. Also, since we're both downloading, I'm going to do dash c. That will continue. So basically, if we're downloading 50 images and we stop halfway, if we start it over again, um, wget will actually re-download each file and append a number to the end, depending on how many times you've downloaded it. With the dash c, it goes, OK, I'm going to check. This file's already downloaded, already downloaded. And it will just zip through them until it gets to the one that's not downloaded and continue from there. So it's just a continuation feature that's built into wget. Then we need to give it a link that we're downloading. So let's go back to the website here. And we're going to go here, view image again. And there's the URL right there. So we'll copy that, paste that into there. But we want to replace the identification, the ID for that image with whatever ID we're reading through line by line. So we'll just use our variable of dollar sign ID that we're creating in our while loop. And that, I believe, is it. Let's hit enter and see what happens. We're downloading some images. I'm going to control C to kill that. List out. You can see the files there. I'll use display and I'll pick one of these at random. Make sure it downloaded OK. Sure did. Uh, and if we run it again, You'll see it will zip through real quick at first. And so it's just going straight through, not downloading the ones we've already downloaded. And then once it gets back to where we left off, it starts slowing down and downloading the images one by one. And that's pretty much it. Once again, just showing you the thought process on how to use tools that we've already learned in previous tutorials. Once again, if I went too fast, this tutorial is too advanced for you. You need to watch some older videos. Um, so there we go. We just downloaded all the images from that main gallery. I don't even know how many are on there. Uh, we can find out right now. Looks like four by... Well, there are a lot. It looks like it's going to keep on loading images if I keep going down. But, oh, you know how we can find out? We can just say list, and we can do word count. So, oh, looks like there are 115 files we downloaded. So we have 115 images we just downloaded in no time, just using this one liner right here. And to make it easier to read, we can throw it into a script. We can, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. We'll just call it get.sh. Start off with our shebang line, bin bash, letting it know that this is a bash script. And I'll paste in that one liner. And we'll just start. You can leave it as a one liner, but putting it into a script allows us to. Um, make it easier to read by dividing the lines up. And indenting some stuff. Oops. There we go. And there's our script. I'll zip that up, throw it online, and I should put a link to that in the description. So check out that link. Uh, I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com for more tips and tutorials. And uh, once again, I hope that you have a great day.